1987, Serbian politician Slobodan Milosevic became president of the country Yugoslavia. He abolished Kosovo's autonomy and wanted to form a greater Serbia. The regions of Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Slovenia opposed this and broke out as independent nations during the early 90s. The remains of Yugoslavia didn't agree with this and declared war on the self-proclaimed states. With so many changes having recently occurred in Europe, both the breakup of Yugoslavia and of the Soviet Union, there were several new nations wanting to take part in the Eurovision Song Contest in 93. Too many to fit according to the EBU, who felt the need to narrow all the new nations down to three using a qualification round called Qualificatia Sam Mill Street. How fair was this qualification round and what happened during this? Yes, that and much more I hope to reveal today when I have invited one of the three acts who made it through. Welcome to the podcast Slagevennerna, Olya Desic and Angela Jelicic of the group Put from Croatia. Hi. Hello. Hi guys, how are you? Under strict uh, epidemiological measures, but uh, otherwise very good, thank you. I recall the group Put consisting of six people, three girls and uh, three guys. Of the girls, one was blonde, another had red hair and the third was brown haired. Yes. The guys can be described as one with long hair, one with glasses and one without. So please tell our listeners which one of these are you? Well, I'm obviously the one with with the glasses. (laughs) And I'm, as you can see, the one with the brown hair. Nothing changed. Nothing changed. (laughs) (laughs) If we begin with... uh, For those of us who are lucky enough to never have experienced such horrible conditions you must have been living through in Croatia back in 93, can you please provide us with a brief description of what the situation was like and how it affected your participation in the contest? The situation in Croatia in those years was uh, very complicated. There were parts of Croatia which were heavily suffering because of the war. Fortunately, we lived in the part of Croatia which was not so afflicted by uh, combat. So we had no bombs uh, in in our region, but we were uh, feeling it very, very strongly since uh, our region, for example, welcomed many refugees. So we lived at that time as a student and uh, uh, we sang as a part of a larger choir. Uh, We gave our contribution to that time through music, participating in various human Humanitarian actions uh, in various uh, music uh, events uh, which uh, were aimed to um, encourage people. So, personally, we lived at that time not so um, badly as many our connationals did. But, of course, it was a wartime and everything in wartime uh, is complicated. We were very young. I was 17, you were 19, and... Uh, the things that you do when it's a normal situation is never normal in such a times like this one we are living right now. It's a kind of a war quarantine sta- state. And uh, years before, it was very, very complicated. And when you are young and you have dreams and something like this happens, you don't know where how to plan your future. We were very lucky because we did have this uh, choir gathering us together and uh, we produced uh, such nice music. And uh, during this period, we were very active in this field. So it was kind of mixed situation. It was very bad, but it was also kind of good. You took part in the national pre-selection with the song Don't Ever Cry facing, among others, well-known future Eurovision artists such as Maya Blagdan, who came second. Tony 
Martinski. Who did you thought would win Dora this year? Well, we were we were very surprised about the winning because at the time the members or the choir was uh, borderly known. We were not publicly wide known, and uh, those guys were, <laughs> and they were in the climaxes of their careers at the moment. So it just happened that maybe because of the different approach ethereal style that our song had and the peace message which was uh, in no commercial way abused it was just sincere and we were very young and naively sincere <laughs> at the time i think that happened sorry guys i mean maya and tony but they came out uh, later on they had their own chances later and, and went well The song was composed by George Novkovic, who was the father of Boris Novkovic, who we know from Eurovision in 2005. <laughs> Jordan Novkovic was one of Croatia's biggest composer. Did he get you more songs to choose from or was Don't Ever Cry their only choice? Jordan Novkovic is just one of the two authors. Uh, the other author is uh, Andrei Basha. And uh, our collaboration with these two uh, authors, the, um, the fruit of our collaboration with Andrei Basha, in whose studio we were uh, usually recording all the records. So uh, they brought us the song, but the, the final shape of the song uh, was um, fruit of their collaboration with Olya, uh, with whom you are speaking now, who did the beautiful vocal arrangement. So we got one song, but uh, that song um, passed through uh, some rearrangement. Uh, this was uh, our contribution, especially the contribution of Olya. And I have also t- uh, to say that we, under our suggestion, there some lyrics were changed also. Yeah, I was very young. And I've learned so much from Andre Basha then. Uh, as an arranger, it was him that was mentoring me through the process. And we, we did we did it very beautifully in style of uh, our own sound that we were creating uh, at the time. Kvalifikatia Sa Mill Street is nowadays generally thought to have been the victim of foul play. Each of the seven participants received exactly one top mark from another country, and each jury consisted of one single person. Did you feel that something was wrong, or was it simply some incredible, exciting voting? Uh, I don't remember that something was wrong. I did not have this uh, this feeling. I remember only that we, uh, of the three entries that went through, Uh, we were on the third place, so we got the, the least uh, number of votes. Am I right? Yes, you are right. Yeah. Uh, it was the guy, nice. The guy knows all the facts. <laughs> <laughs> Ask him. I have to say that we were a bit uh, under pressure in the Ljubljana. It was something um, unknown for us. This was the first real competition, the first competition uh, in Croatia. Uh, we were uh, practically unaware of the situation. But in Ljubljana now uh, the things went uh, internationally and uh, we were feeling a bit of pressure. Of course it wouldn't be received well if we didn't pass through the qualifications. As you can see those in the, in the years, in the recent years, it's, all, it's, it's also not a nice thing if you come home before you even enter the Eurozone contest. So, so the, the achievement on that day was quite uh, extraordinary for us. Coming home from Ljubljana to Rijeka, driving without any tears and <laughs> sorrow, 
We, we, we did not go to Rijeka. We went to Chakovets directly yes, to another Chakovets, concert. Yes. To another concert. We didn't go. Oh, thank you, Angela, for enlightening <laughs> me. Well, so, but yeah, Emil but does not know it. I don't know it. How <laughs> how could Emil know it? So so uh, it also put uh, a burden to you know to our shoulders, becoming representatives of uh, a song that's for the first time representing the new country which was just formed and uh, which is in desperate need of uh, recognition throughout the world uh, for which the song on Eurosong is one of the tools and it wasn't easy. And many people from Croatia then, from our own uh, industry, doubted and we had the uh, supportive and non-supportive. I, I think they were divided in 50-50. <laughs> so it wasn't easy. Do you remember Anything special from uh, the Qualificatia Samil Street in Ljubljana? Oh, I remember something. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I remember. Just... <laughs> I'm said. sorry, Olya. Uh, sorry. When we sang first uh, in the studio uh, with the orchestra, we sang uh, firstly uh, a cappella, all the song. And all the orchestra was beating with their... Um, Most as a sign of appreciation of our singing. They liked us. They did they it also us. in Ireland. It wasn't so, it wasn't so uh, usual to, to hear the choir-like arrangement and singers, which are fully trained. We were in top shape uh, at the time because we were all around Croatia and before the world, the war, the region also, the Yugoslavia, and we were drilled every day for three times. So it was a, it was a hard work. You don't expect that on Eurovision song. I think that's the reason. I remember. I remember that we were uh, singing. We had the opportunity to sing a second song, which uh, is also was recorded specially for the occasion. And now it's very popular to hear this song in our own part of Croatia because it was the song regionally picked from the region, uh, from the county we live in. And we picked the song called Mom Zavichayu, and uh, we did the arrangement together also. Uh, Andre was working on the uh, instrumental and me on the vocal, of course, with the mentoring from him. And Angela and I say, sang the lead uh, parts. My actually recorded anything else in the future and we changed our members i left early some of the guys stayed and you know the phillips uh, feelings came in only two songs were recorded don't ever cry and mom zavichai you came third and got a ticket to mill street together with your neighbors from slovenia and bosnia herzegovina what do you remember from your week in mill street about them i, no. I remember <laughs> I remember no. meeting them on bre- breakfast in hotels. It was it was such an experience. We ate everything which was there because we are a very hungry nation. So <laughs> so we ate everything from breakfast. Us and two of our neighbors' teams. It was um, yeah, we we remember the um, our accommodation was arranged. The little town, the name of the little town was Kilarni, and the, our hosts were. Uh, beautiful people who cared about us, about us and um, they made us feel really, really welcome in Ireland. So we got the opportunity to visit all the national parks, uh, the castles uh, and so on. We went also to Atlantic, right on the ocean. Uh, briefly, yeah, the fjords. So, yes, exactly. Beautiful, beautiful nation, beautiful people. The, the Ireland was something that left us very big mark on our, in our heart. I've never had an experience to go back. I always wanted to, and I'm promising to my wife to visit Ireland again. 
we, we really had a nice tourist uh, view of uh, sites in Ireland. And as well, we've met many, many important people, media. Angela and I mostly gave interviews because we, we had better knowledge of English. Uh, so I remember we, we, we had an interview with BBC, MTV, and, and the hype about us was a rather bigger because uh, uh, of the situation uh, at home. So it was also pressing because uh, a, a burden because it was something you had to do right. You had to communicate right. You had to say uh, right. the right thing and the right, yeah, because it, it was all over the world in all newspapers. Yeah. It was not just music. It was, a, I can say, a sort of diplomacy. In yes. that time, yes, a, a diplomatic enterprise that we entered. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, I asked you before what you remember from Mill Street, and you uh, thought I meant what you remember from your uh, neighbors from Slovenia and Bosnia Herzegovina. But uh, can I ask you how was the atmosphere between you and the delegations from your former countrymen of the other ex Yugoslav republics? A beautiful atmosphere, I can say. Uh, we have many photos that we took uh, together, uh, cheering uh, in one of those uh, parties. And so there were very, very nice people, uh, the Slovenian guys and girls and the Bosnian guys and girls, very, very warm and a nice people. Yes, I agree. Well, wonderful to hear. I will talk to Mohammed from Fasla next week. Great. Great. I was seven years old at the time, and me and my good siblings, for you. <laughs> <laughs> me and my siblings learned and sang the song "Don't Ever Cry," and we were, of course, much helped that the significant parts of the lyrics were in English. Was this ever a source of controversy that it was so much in English? A little bit, yeah. There was a problem with that, with the percentage of of lyrics in English. I remember, so they asked us to try to invent and write some lyrics in the piano you will see that the refrain i wrote the lyrics for the refrain <laughs> only sang once and later on the guys professionals like George and Andre finished the song with the new lyrics which were better obviously the last version is good with the percentages of lyrics <laughs> in Croatian and English but nowadays it's obviously possible to have it 100% in English yes so we were ahead of our time <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah you are we've anticipated this you even recorded a completely English version of the song. Yes. yes. Did you think you had a chance to win it all in Mill Street? When we came, we, we, did, we, we went well on the betting uh, boards. Yeah, we, we, were, we were highly positioned. We, were we third when we came to Ireland? Angela, I don't remember. Third, then second, then uh, even first some days. So we were a bit shocked. The road is on its way. For everyone to dance. So let us see those cars through the children's eyes. Why should we cry? Why should we cry? We did not expect the so good odds. But uh, at the end, uh, I think the, the things went well okay, for us. We, we did not have the ambition uh, to win. Uh, we were not simply prepared for this personally. Ireland won on home soil. Did you have any particular favorites among the other songs? Now, when I listen to all the songs uh, that were uh, sang, in that time, in that Eurovision context, I understand that the two best artists are the Irish uh, singer, and uh, there was another outstanding artist, but was not so appreciated, and this is Enrico Ruggeri, the Italian cantautor. So these two were out of our league, I have to say. Ma si assomigliano, i sogni non cambiano mai. 
se ti prendono la mano cercano la compagnia il vento e la guerra li portano via ma i sogni non cambiano mai svegliati sole fatti sempre I remember Maria Magdalena from Austria because the guy was singing it all the time in the toilet So I, I, I can't forget this song. Maria Magdalena, do the circle light. Maria Magdalena, change me to any kind. Maria Magdalena, keep the dynamo. make any good friends among the other participants we we hung out with johnny logan for a while maybe one day when he was there he was very friendly he was yeah. naked to his uh, b- belt and waist <laughs> and he was he was there because obviously he was the author of the song why me uh, a year before this song was a winner and he was in some kind of uh, relationship as an author this year or that year can you tell us some juicy details of what happened behind the scenes Apart you from see. singing in the toilet, you mean? <laughs> no, no, no. Maybe not from the toilet, but behind yeah. the scenes, from the stage. We were concentrated on preparing. We were also on the drill, because we were used to that. We had this uh, in the choir. So it was kind of every few hours there's a rehearsal to repeat something and to make sure that you are sure, which is double sure. And then we also sang in the toilet. <laughs> preparing because the acoustics is great in the toilet in the toilet so i don't remember that anything happened then that that was kind of you know vodka juicy or something <laughs> like that but uh, on the day of uh, event i remember there was some alcohol pouring the guys were happier and happier and the atmosphere was building up we weren't drinking it obviously i was minor then uh, anyway so it was normal Normal uh, and a lot of work, 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 just as Olya said. We had uh, all these rehearsals, then reviewing the rehearsals, then discussing with the director who should he uh, focus on during the song, then re-listening and so all Work, work, work. It was no, no leisure, I have to say. I found videos of the rehearsals. Have you seen that, Angela? Yes, yes, I have that. Yeah, you sent it to me. Yes. So yes. it's it's something you don't expect when you have this kind of a memory, which when internet was not in existent, you just don't expect a blast from the past, from a time which was not official. It's something you remember, but you you don't expect to find it online. And I found it. I found two rehearsals, and after the rehearsal, you go to the room with the guys from production, and you discuss everything you need. And, and I found those, and we were in our casual clothes. Some things are still there, because the guys like you, who follow, and were, were there with the cameras, put it online today. It's great. And one, one thing uh, in- interesting that we had never before or later, we had our own bodyguards in Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, because this is since... because of the situation of, of the war yes. in, in Balkans. Yeah. Yes, we're, we're coming from a, a region with a high political risk. So uh, Irish police gave us bodyguards. With the buses, they were, they were stopping the crossroads with the police, yeah. police motorbikes. And we were trying to escape them, of course, at <laughs> night. But there were always two of them, very discreetly. Some were there, but they were there, you know, the two shadows in the car. <laughs> Have you considered to compete again in Eurovision? Uh, one uh, member of the uh, group, Put, Vivian Galetta, the blonde one, uh, she's a professional singer. She sings uh, in an opera house and so on. And one year, uh, she and her husband, Volin Gerbats, uh, they uh, took part in Dora. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah
one of our members, also Naim, was uh, oh, the, okay. the yes. guy with the long hair, was also starting his own career uh, at home. And he went to Dora maybe a year or two years later. Yeah. <laughs> I was, uh, and I'm still in ways connected to this festival because of my work as a producer and arranger, but uh, never again in this way, like constructing a song or a band to go for your song, you know. But the choir, Utokazi, uh, under the artistic uh, leadership of Miranda Djakovic, they uh, uh, were in Dora, they, they were trying... Uh, to present their, their selves and to go to Eurovision, but not under the name of Put, but the, the whole name of the choir, Putokazi. <laughs> There was another generation of singers, much younger than we are, but the, the institution is the same, which I have to say sends the greetings to all Eurovision fans. Uh, this is a message directly from Miranda, which is the leader of the choir. There was also Annie in 1997. They all were members of Puto Kazi Juniors when we were there, so when they grew up a little bit, 17, 18, then they went to uh, also Ireland, I think. Ireland, And also Andrei Babic, who is a famous composer of uh, different countries of Euro song, is our friend and a member of our generation of Putokazit. He was uh, already there with us uh, in the background of the situation, and uh, later on he was very famous and uh, successful as an author uh, in Slovenia, Portugal, I don't know where. He's also in Croatia, fantastic composer. Yeah, he's he's one of one of our core. Oh, we all yes. we all developed in different directions. It was a very very uh, rich incubator of talents. You were the first one to represent Croatia in Eurovision, and Croatia has been uh, to Eurovision since '93. Do you have any favorites among Croatians' songs from the year? Uh, we mentioned Andrei Babic, so Claudia Beni was a beautiful song, uh, beautifully arranged and sang. She, she, she is one of the favorites for me. I think that Group Magazine had very nice songs. Uh, this is not the music I follow or like, uh, but I, of course, uh, enjoy it. Uh, enjoy every music when it's nice and uh, well done. This was well done. At least one of the songs they went with, uh, I don't know which combination of uh, Daniela, Magazine, whatever, but uh, what was the song? Neka mi ne Neka mi yeah. Neka mi ne I have to say that this one is maybe one of the best I've heard. I think the strongest maybe of all our songs was Maria Magdalene. her presence and her singing and her passion uh, maybe this was the, the 
according to my opinion, the strongest. Thank you for this opportunity to speak with you. It was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. You have all reminded me of, of things I've, I've already forgotten, so good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very glad, Olia, that you took uh, Angela in this because Angela was my favorite of all of you guys when I saw you. I was so in love with you, Angela. <laughs> Very Thank good. You. <laughs> you know, we only saw you in the last clip of Don't Ever uh-huh. Cry. Yeah, great. it's nice, nice to hear. Nice to hear it. Thank it's you. It's a Thank reunion. You. Great. <laughs> <laughs> And thanks to you, the listener, it's an amazing feeling to reach out to such a wonderful audience. Opinions, questions or suggestions are more than welcome. Use our social media accounts or email me at emil at schlagervannerna.se. Vala puno over your bilu fantastično. Thank you so much. Vala i tebi, samo naprijed. Bye Emil, bye bye.